Most family crossovers fit pretty neatly into specific categories. There are two-row models or three-row models. There are the mainstream affordable versions and pricier luxury models. But some crossovers try and blur the lines between those groupings. The Nissan Murano is one of those tweener models with a bigger emphasis on design and premium content. Plus, it's a little bit larger than most two-row models. With that positioning, it's an interesting stepping stone between an affordable small SUV and a luxury model. How does it look? Nissan took a big risk with the Murano's looks, but I think it really paid off. This is one of the most dramatically styled SUVs you can buy in this price bracket, and I really like the sportiness of the prominent sheet metal creases and the floating roof appearance. The Murano is definitely the looker of the carpool lane. How's the storage? The trunk is deep and wide, and it's really easy to fold the rear seats to get some more space. But the cool styling that looks great from the outside isn't so great for cargo capacity. This low roof and this angled liftgate kind of cut into the vertical storage space. And the liftgate's so low that I almost bump my head on it when I'm loading things. There's a lot of storage space. Nissan gives you this tall cubby between the front seats, but it's quite narrow, so it's tough to figure out exactly what you'd store in it. There are also two cup holders up front and two in back. It's frustratingly difficult to run a cable to the USB port though, and it'd be nice to have a more obvious space to rest your phone while driving. Is it roomy? Absolutely. Up front, it's easy to find a comfortable driving position. I'm a totally average five foot 10, and I've got lots of headroom. The door panels have plenty of space for your elbows, and there's a good distance between the two front seats as well. In the second row, I have more than enough leg and headroom. Two adults could ride back here all day without a problem. How does the interior feel? You won't mistake the inside of the Murano for a German luxury SUV, but it's still a really nice place to spend time. There's really nice leather trim everywhere, all the controls look and feel great, and I love the way you sink into these plush leather seats. But I'm not quite such a fan of this plasticky pearlescent trim. It just looks really incongruous with the rest of the design. Is it well equipped? I'm driving the Murano Platinum with the technology package, so it has pretty much every feature you'd want, including options like a panoramic sunroof, cooled front seats, heated rear seats, and an active safety suite with tech like adaptive cruise control. This model's 20-inch wheels look great, too, but even base Muranos get 18-inch wheels and gadgets like a touchscreen radio. Still, the full near-luxury experience only comes on the pricier SL and Platinum levels of the Murano. How's the infotainment system? Nissan's infotainment system doesn't have the prettiest graphics or the newest features, but it's fast and works really well. It's especially good to have these easy-to-use physical volume and tuning controls but you don't get modern features like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay connectivity, for instance. The big color display in the instrument cluster is a nice addition that shows even more information while on the move. Is it a good daily driver? The great thing about the Murano is that it's really, really easy to drive. It's really nimble when you're driving in city streets like this. There's a lot of passing power from the V6 engine, and at the same time, the CVT keeps revs really low when you're just cruising. The other good thing is the suspension. It soaks up every bump and pothole, and despite how low the roofline is for that cool styling, visibility is pretty good out of the back. Is it fun to drive? Not really, but that's pretty typical of SUVs like this. Even with 260 horsepower from the engine, it's not particularly quick or exciting. But the upshot, like I said, is that it's really quiet and comfortable at all times. How's the fuel economy? The EPA rates the Murano at 21 miles per gallon in the city and 28 MPG on the highway. And you get the same figures with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. That's pretty unusual because usually picking all wheel drive incurs a small fuel economy penalty. 
So far, I've been averaging about 21 miles per gallon in mixed driving, which is fine, but not great for this class of car. How much is it? You can get into a base Nissan Murano for about $30,000, but this particular car is loaded up to the tune of $44,000. That's not an unreasonable price range for this size of premium SUV, though most shoppers would be perfectly happy with a mid-grade model in the high $30,000 range. The SL trim level, which is right below the Platinum, starts at about $37,000. What are the negatives? It's worth thinking about what kind of practicality you need from your crossover because the Murano does force some compromises in terms of fuel economy and cargo space. And the design could be off-putting to people. It's a little flashy and in your face compared to some other crossovers. Who should buy it? Nissan isn't a luxury brand, but the Murano gives you something that's a little bit more premium than you might expect. It's spacious, stylish, well-equipped, and really easy to live with. It's a great choice for someone who wants to take a step up to something slightly nicer than your everyday family SUV. If you like this Why Buy video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter or Facebook, or read us at motorone.com.